Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm a full-time reseller on both eBay and Amazon uh, for the last 15 years. We're getting the cats out of the way early in this video. I'm in my comfy sweats um, and I'm sourcing the, my favorite way possible, which is to let the deals come to me. One of my resolutions for 2024 was to do more online sourcing because I traditionally don't like do a lot of that. As much as I love sourcing in person, and I'll never ever stop doing that, I wanted to supplement a little bit with stuff online. And for me, there was no better way to do that than to add in stuff from shopgoodwill.com. I've got this massive haul of stuff that finally has come in. Um, last couple of weeks or so, maybe like the last three weeks, this is all the stuff that I ordered. And we're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna tell you about how much it was worth. I don't know, it's kind of like a haul video, but like, not quite. Without further ado, let's roll the intro and start unboxing these goodies. Roll the intro. It may not look like it, but this, this comfy sweats is peak reselling. So first of all, what is shopgoodwill.com? That is Goodwill's sort of online eBay. They do auctions. They do do buy it nows occasionally for stuff. Um, but the majority of what you're going to see is one week auctions. If it comes into a Goodwill store, they might pluck it and put it on their online uh, auctions. And I know a lot of resellers, we all complain about this, like, oh, Goodwill's cherry picking for their own website but like you can play the game along with them and try and get some of this stuff you're gonna pay a lot more than you would if you found it in the store but there's still some opportunities for making money you can choose to look at goodwills from all over the country or you can do what i do and that's just focus on the goodwill areas around me because um their shipping is outrageous they all seem to ship through fedex and they charge an arm and a leg for it and the handling fee on top of it. And you can beat that out if you source a local Goodwill and you can go pick it up for free. So for the most part, I only focus on the four regional Goodwill chains around me. And if you want to save a little extra money, I suggest that you also just focus on your closest Goodwills that you're willing to drive to and pick the stuff up. One of them I did ship because it's the furthest away and I looked at what my schedule was gonna look like and I decided that I would just pay the shipping because I bought several different lots and I was able to combine shipping and make it not so bad. Otherwise, I would have had to drive an hour out of my way when I had other stuff to do, so that was my choice. So my first lot was this bag of miscellaneous perfumes and the majority of the perfumes in here are not worth anything. For this lot, I paid $53, which again, way more than you'd pay if you just found these individually at the Goodwill, at least at my Goodwills. But um, I'll show you why I was willing to pay that much. Oh my God, I just opened the bag and they all stink. Stinky, ugh, gross. Now I'm gonna smell like old, ugh. I'm gonna smell like nasty perfume all day. I love perfume, but I'm like very picky about it. I wouldn't wear any of these scents personally. There was only two in that whole bag that I was interested in because the rest are like, you know, Elizabeth Taylor White Diamonds, which is a ridiculously common scent. You can still buy it today. It's not really worth that much. But these these were the two that I wanted out of that whole lot. And that is the Estee um, Super Cologne, right? Yeah, the Super Cologne. I've sold this many times before. When I find it, it's always a great thing. And then this one, which I was not familiar with, but I looked up when I was trying to figure out what, if anything, was worth it in this lot besides this, which I knew right at a glance was worth money. Um, Aviance Night Musk. Again, I've never sold this one before. Somebody just sold this one on February 5th for $95 plus shipping. So I was like, heck yeah, this one's completely full. Like I can definitely sell it on eBay. Even if I can't, I'm pretty sure it's vintage. So I would still be able to sell it used in the vintage um, perfume and shaving collectibles category. I believe this one, it, it might be vintage depending on like when it was made. But I've said in a previous video, the easiest way to tell if a perfume is vintage, if you have the box, is if it has this, um, the green dot recycling symbol. 
and also if it has a website you know it was probably made around 2000 or later i think the green dot recycling symbol was like i don't remember exactly when it was introduced but i don't know if it has that it's it's not like old old yeah this one this one is not like completely full so i'm gonna have to see if i can find the exact age on this to see if i can qualify it as being over 20 years old and i can put it in the vintage perfume shaving category but even in this um i'd say like 80 percent full condition this is also worth a lot of money especially with the box it's always nice when you can have the original box with these things this is one of those ones where people don't seem to know how to comp it properly because you'll find comps and they're just all over the place you know up to 200 if it's brand new as some people do like 100 150 brand new and it's like if you're seeing high comps mixed with low comps just ask the high comp i promise it'll probably sell anyway my gut tells me from previous sales and the data that's on ebay right now i think i can comfortably get 130 maybe 150 for this so paired with this one that's also about 100 we're talking like over $200 in perfumes. And again, I paid what, like 53, I said? I actually don't know what's in this next one. I'm gonna have to open it up. I know what I'm supposed to get. So I guess this is gonna be a really funny video if I unbox this stuff and it's not what I hoped it would be. This is my lot of cameras, it looks like. I bought a bunch of cameras this month because that's just what I happened to find. Some months it's other stuff. I'll look at basically every category on Shop Goodwill um, and just if I can get a deal, great. If I can't, I'll move on to the next item. There's always going to be something. Okay, so this is three different lots that I purchased from one Goodwill chain and then they combined the shipping for me on all of them. One was this Nikon Coolpix uh, S3. For this, I paid $10.99. Um, there are like, nobody wanted this and I was like, cool. It has the original box. Um, I'll take a, I'll take a gamble on it for that price. Because the thing about buying, the thing about buying cameras from shop Goodwill is they don't test them either. They don't have all the parts to, to test them because they're missing the charger or the battery, or they just don't, they don't bother. Um, so you are taking a risk buying electronics because they'll just straight up tell you like this is untested It may or may not work and you know You might be buying it based on it working and it ends up not working if this works and it has all the accessories and the box and everything someone sold um, The camera the charger and the battery for $60 plus shipping recently and it didn't include the box So I might be able to get a little higher and again. I paid $10.99 for that so it was worth the gamble to see if this ends up working. And then in a different auction, I purchased this also inbox Canon PowerShot A560. And for this, I paid $13. This one looks like it's in really good shape. Like, wow, all the manuals and stuff with it. Even though a lot of like stuff is useless, like you don't necessarily need the software disc to make these things work. Oh, nice. There's even like a little memory card that no one used. It's in the original little packaging. So um, that's going to be awesome. Okay. So this one runs on double A's. I love these cameras that run on double A's because it means you don't have to spend anything extra if it didn't come with a battery or a charger or the battery was bad. Um, and a lot of people like those too because they like to just put batteries in on the go. But I'm looking at a sold that sold yesterday on eBay for $54 or $54.99 plus shipping. And it doesn't look like it included the box or any of this nice stuff or a memory card. So I can probably push it higher than that. So this next one I bought was supposed to be five cameras. It was a lot of five cameras. One of them was this like no name HD sports thing. I didn't even look this up. I don't think it's worth anything. This is not what I bought the lot for. Sometimes you end up getting lots with stuff that don't, that come with stuff that you don't want. Um, anyway, I'll look that up. I don't think it's worth anything though. But there were supposed to be four cameras. There's three bags here. I'm gonna have to see if they doubled them up. If not, they shorted me a camera. So let's see if it's in one of these. 
Okay, no, there's two in here. I think we're good. It was another one of these cannons that runs on double A's. Oh no. Jeez, are you not gonna focus for me today? Anyway, yeah. Um, thankfully not down at the bottom, just at the top. And it's not that bad. I think I should be able to clean that up pretty well. It's got a memory card. Just about every day one sells for about $60. So that was cool. The next one was this Casio XLM. Um, it does not come with the charger, so I will have to buy a charger for it. But it did have the original battery in there, so that's good. Usually it's not a big deal. If it doesn't come with a charger or the battery, it's usually about 10 bucks to just pick one up for it. I will not buy these cameras missing pieces where you can't actually see if it works and then just sell it as untested. Why would you not pay an extra $10 to get even more money out of it, selling it as a working unit. Um, again, it falls into my philosophy of put the work in because it's really not that much work to just buy the charger and charge it and see if it works. There's not a lot of great data on this one. I'm like looking at the solds and they're all over the place. Someone sold a silver one that came with the battery and the charger and it looks like a memory card for $43 plus shipping. So. It's a nice little thing to add to the other ones that I bought. Next camera in the lot was this Panasonic Lumix, uh, the SZ1. It, much like the previous one, does not have a charger, but it does have the OEM battery, so I'll have to buy a charger for that. So we're already having to spend an extra $20 on this lot to get it in working condition. This one did not come with a memory card either. Um, it's never like a big deal if you have to sell without a memory card. Most people can scrounge up a memory card pretty easily. But if it does end up having one, I just pass it along with the camera as like a bonus. Someone sold one of these on February 9th. Today is February 12th when I'm filming this. So just a few days ago for $70. I don't know what's going to fit in this. It came in one of these bags. Maybe it's with this camera. It's nice if I got a charger for something. Will it be you? No, because you run on double A's. Uh, the Z915, it looks like. And somebody sold one that was not blue. It looks black. Um, well, somebody sold a blue one literally yesterday with extras. So it looks like a bag and a memory card for $35 plus shipping. Yeah, I definitely didn't buy this lot for this camera, but it does have value. I can sell it. I can make 30 bucks on it or whatever. It, it all adds up. And another box to unbox. Ooh, what could be in here? Oh, man. Okay, so like, not a camera, not a perfume. <laughs> Plush dogs. I didn't want this. This came with it, but I didn't want that. This is what I bought. This is what I bought it for. You know, at first glance, you'd probably be like, maybe it's a for real friend or something. And that's why it's worth money. You'd be on the right track, but it's not a for real friend. Um, it kind of is though, like just not the actual brand. This is one of those like um, realistic dogs that you give old people um, who can't take care of an actual dog, but they still want like the companionship. It's one of those like old people robot dogs, I call them. Ageless innovations, that's what it's called. So this is one of those companion dogs. I think they literally sell these at like Walgreens now. I've seen the robot pets at Walgreens uh, that keep old people company. Uh, I, I would prefer a cat. I know they make cats uh, that have like realistic breathing and stuff. That's gonna be me when I'm old. I'm gonna have my old, old lady realistic cats cause I probably won't be able to take care of real ones. Um, but this, this was $6.99 and this was a buy it now. This wasn't even an auction. So anybody could have gone up and bought this for $6.99. Out of the box, there's comps from like $35 to $65. Either way, since I was already buying stuff from this Goodwill, I was like, I'll just throw in the $6.99 dog because as long as it works, it's gonna be a good little find to make money. Lastly, this one's also quite exciting to me and I still don't really know how I managed to win some of this stuff because I looked at it and I'm like, I know that has value. It's crazy to me to think that other people didn't see the value because there was not much data, but what I could find looked pretty darn good. 
Givenchy. I think that's how you say it. Givenchy. I don't know. Not French. Little mini perfume set. Um, very neat. Four different scents. So this first one, this is only a half ounce, so barely anything. The full size of the Amarige, I figure that's what this is called, only sells for like, it's sold as low as $15 plus shipping. There's one brand new in the box that sold for 46, but that's the full size. This is just a little baby one. This next one was Hot Couture. Um, somebody sold this one in this size on February 2nd for $25. This one again, like the first one, it looked like the bigger bottles don't, like the comps are all over the place on this one. This one is Organza. And again, it's the, it's the 0.5 ounce, so it's a little baby bottle. It's not the big one. This next one is Indecence. Again, the half ounce. Somebody just sold this one on February 10th for $44 plus shipping. So this was the winner of all of them. Um, if this was the, the bigger size, somebody sold the bigger size for $250. I paid $38 for the box. It's a bit much, but... I will be able to probably double my money on that, which I find exciting. And because it was coming from the Goodwill that I was already ordering stuff from, I was like, whatever, I will just continue ordering stuff from them and they can combine whatever they can combine. That was all stuff that I bought in January, like literally just one month having stuff shipped to my house. I did pick up some stuff from my closest Goodwill chain. Um, it was like another digital camera and some makeup, some Avon makeup that I found. So I have been getting other stuff that wasn't shipped to me. I still really like the, the whole model of like sitting on my couch with my laptop and like looking at the available auctions and then favoriting what I might want to come back to later, putting in a bid on it and seeing if I win. The biggest problem with Shop Goodwill is the people will bid stuff up to ebay prices and in some cases like well above ebay prices to the point where i'm like you could just buy this on ebay right now today for less money like what are you doing bidding it up so high i don't understand why that happens there was so much more stuff that i bid on and didn't win because the bid went like way higher than i was comfortable paying so if you're gonna get caught up with these goodwill auctions have a price in mind early and be disciplined enough to not go above that if somebody outbids you. But if you're willing to put the work in and like really look at everything and comp it out and have a price in mind that you're willing to pay, I will usually go up to almost half of what it's worth, um, especially if it's something that I can just go drive and pick up and save shipping on. Because like I said, you want to avoid doing the really far away Goodwills because the shipping is so expensive the way they do it unless you're gonna buy multiple things from that same Goodwill and then they'll combine them. Overall, pretty good though. What is this, probably like $500 worth of stuff? Maybe like two or 300, I don't even know. That's the problem, I didn't sit here and like add this up, but I have a crap ton of cameras that'll be selling. I've got those two perfumes that are $100 each. I've got the dog that I can sell for maybe $70. And the little perfumes, like it adds up, it adds up. I didn't have to like spend any of my time out of the house to go find this stuff, so that's great. So to that I say, don't get out there, stay at home, have fun and bid on something good.